So hello everyone, my name is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist for BioRad Canada, and I would like to talk to you today a little bit about um, a solution that we offer called Bioplex. Now this is a product, uh, this is a solution that we offer labs who are interested in testing multiple um, analytes, multiple proteins or DNA fragments or RNA fragments in a sample in a single sample. So how does it work? Um, the technology consists of an instrument, consists of software obviously, and kits. And these, these together form what's called the Bioplex solution. So and of course service and support which are key for, uh, for developing uh, your assays and helping you run your assays. So the system is an integrated 96 well plate based suspension analysis system. So essentially this system allows you to simultaneously quantitate up to 100 different proteins, peptides, DNA and RNA fragments in a single sample. And when we talk about a single drop of sample we're talking about anywhere between 15 and 50, 50 microliters of sample. So um, the key term in this slide is really multiplexing. Unlike ELISA or Western blotting or other types of technologies that only allow you to really probe for one or two or maybe three analytes at a time in a sample, here uh, you, can, you can probe for many, many more uh, analytes. And if you're only intending on probing for one analyte, Bioplex is actually significantly less expensive than, uh, than most commercial uh, ELISA type assays, even for a single, uh, single analyte. The technology is based on the, um, uh, and licensed from Luminex Corporation. So Luminex invented this technology um, and, and, and the way the technology works uh, actually, I'll get to the way the technology works in a minute. I just wanted to get to this slide here about why we would want multiplex. So, of course, um, there are many reasons to multiplex uh, samples. Uh, the first and most important reason uh, in, a, in a day and age where we're looking at, mo at smaller and more, much more precious samples, where we're starting to now uh, micro dissect. Um, uh, tissue samples, very you know embryonic samples, these kinds of things, where we have very very little sample to analyze, <coughs> it really is a useful technology to be able to get as much information as you can out of your sample. Of course, coupled to this is reducing uh, assay reagent volume, expense, and labor because you're, you're you're looking at more more analytes, more targets at once per sample, and then. Uh, from a more scientific perspective, we're able to dramatically increase the amount of information from a sample and even further to generate more information on in the interrelationships between related analytes within a sample with better correlation to in vivo assays. So this final point really, uh, really is important when we look at, um, at comparative technologies such as ELISA or Western blotting where if you wanted to analyze multiple analytes with either of those technologies, it would require running multiple blots or multiple ELISA plates for each analyte or stripping uh, a membrane and, re and rerunning for another analyte, another antibody, with uh, what is typically very high um, interplate or interblot variability between uh, from blot to blot. So here we have everything analyzed together in one sample which, which, uh, which reduces that variability, takes one additional step out of the equation to introduce variability into the results. So if we compare ELISA and Bioplex, uh, and let's assume we want to do 27 cytokines as an example in a, in a sample which is uh, perfectly easily doable with, a, with, 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 uh, with the Bioplex assay. Let's assume we had 80 samples to analyze. So essentially a full plate's worth of samples if you include the standard curve on each plate. Um, total data points 2160 which is 80 times 27 but the, but the big factor here with ELISA is that it would require 27 ELISA plates because on ELISA plates you can only analyze one analyte at a time. So you would need 27 commercial ELISA plates. At a cost of let's say four or five hundred dollars per plate you're looking at 
well over $10,000 to do this assay and well over uh, 60 hours worth of work to analyze these, probably a week, a full week's worth of work to, an to, to run and then analyze these plates. Even more important is the amount of sample that would be required because on, on each well of an ELISA plate you require a minimum of 50 and typically 100 microliters of, uh, of sample. So if we're running 100 microliters of sample on each well times 27 plates, that's 2.7 mils of sample which is huge for, for uh, most types of uh, mouse studies or, or human, human samples. Uh, the assay, uh, and then uh, I'll get to assay range in a minute. If we go now to Bioplex, the same 27 analytes times 80 samples, same amount of data points, but you can do all of that in a single plate because each well of the plate contains uh, detection for all 27 of those cytokines because you're multiplexing them. So you're getting the same number of data points out of, out of your assay, but you're doing the assay with one plate in a morning, three hours. Very, very straightforward and very easy to do. You therefore, because you're doing everything in one plate, you require much, much less sample as opposed to 2.7 ml of sample here, you would need 12 and a half microliters per well of serum or plasma or 50 microliters of other types of biological fluids. And cell culture supernatant is just an example here, but I've seen, uh, I've seen people use uh, lung lavage, synovial fluid, I've seen people use um, uh, urine, I've seen um, teardrops, so pretty much any biological secretory fluid works beautifully for cytokines uh, with this assay. It's a very robust assay. If we compare assay range, for serum or plasma, Bioplex is typically about tenfold more sensitive. So down to 0.2 picogram per ml, 1 to 0.2 picogram per ml, uh, which with serum and plasma you're easily uh, at two or even higher than that for the, for the lower end. And then for the higher end, about the same. And if we're looking at other types of assays, it's a similar range of detection, except, again, a broader dynamic range with biotechs. So how does the assay work? The assay works with beads. So this is what Luminex um, created. They created beads that are, that are basically coated with two different dyes, a dye, a, a two different classification dyes which fluoresce at different intensities based on the concentration. So this bead is, a, as, and they've made a hundred of these beads. So these are coded, standard, lot verified beads. And here's, for example, this would be, let's say, bead 50, which is coded with a very high concentration of dye 2 and a very low concentration of dye 1. Here's, let's say, bead 100, which would be coded with a very high concentration of dye 1 and a very low concentration of dye 2. These beads are excited with a red laser. So the fluorophores that are coated to these beads, the two fluorophores are both excited with a red laser, and then the beads can be separated and classified by the instrument based on the concentration of classification dye 2 and classification dye 1. And here are the beads that the instrument sees. So no spectral overlap between any of the beads, allowing you to essentially multiplex your assay together, similar to, to a fax type assay for those of you out there who, who understand fax. <coughs> so if we want to make an assay, essentially you would buy, let's say we want to do a fourplex assay, we would buy four of the lots of each of four different bead regions. So let's say bead, bead 50, bead 70, bead 90, and bead region 100, let's say, okay, coated with different concentrations. Each each set of beads would be coated with different concentrations of dye 1 and dye 2. Then what we would do is we would individually coat the beads, because the beads are all conjugatable. So we conjugate the beads with our different antibodies. So let's say this would be IL-6, IL-10, TNF-alpha, and, uh, and uh, IL-2. Okay, so we have different antibodies coated to each different type of bead. Once the coating of the antibodies is done, 
on each bead, then you can plex them together. So the co obviously, coating each of these beads would be done separately in separate vials. Okay, and then you block the additional binding sites, and now you can plex those beads together because the instrument will know which bead is which by the fluorescence of each bead. So now we incubate. So we incubate our four plex assay that we've made with our sample. And of course, the antibody will bind our analyte. So, and this is, this, this is uh, exactly what we see here. So the little squares and diamonds and circles are analytes that are bound to the beads. Then we wash away our sample, so leaving the analytes still bound to the beads. Then we add our detection antibody. So this is, so the, the antibody bound to the bead is the capture antibody. We add the detection antibody, which, which is what's on the outside of the analytes now on each of these beads. Okay? So these are forming now a sandwich, just like, in a, just like any other sandwich immunoassay, except the sandwich immunoassay is taking place on each bead. So we have our detection antibody bound to a different epitope of the protein or the analyte that's bound to the bead. And that detection antibody, the green balls at the end of the detection antibody, is uh, phycoerythrin. So those, so those detection antibodies are ultimately coupled by a streptavidin biotin interaction to phycoerythrin. So we end up with a bead, the capture antibody, the analyte, the detection antibody, and phycoerythrin. That mix of beads now are washed, so everything's washed clean leaving just the sandwich on each bead, and now we're able to run the assay through the Bioplex instrument. So the way this works is the beads are drawn up in suspension, so we always keep them in suspension in buffer, and they're drawn up into the instrument by a needle, and then they're aligned down a channel so, so they go by two lasers, the red laser, to, de to determine which bead is which, so this is the sorting aspect of the instrument, and they go by one at a time. So they're in a very narrow channel that aligns the beads one at a time. They go by the red laser to tell the instrument which bead is which, and then they pass by a green laser to excite the phycoerythrin to tell us how much analyte is ultimately bound to the bead. So we know by the red laser that this, for example, is IL-10, and by the green laser we know how much IL-10 was bound to the bead by the intensity of the fluorescence of phycoerythrin. You can tell the instrument to read as many beads as you wish from each region to get a good statistical um, uh, value for the intensity of fluorescence of the phycoerythrin. We typically recommend reading 50 beads per analyte. And our assays come with about 2,500 beads per analyte in the well. So when you, when, in the final dilutions, when you've added your, 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 uh, your beads into all the wells to mix with your, your uh, sample, there are 2,500 beads from each analyte that are in there. So reading 50 is no problem at all. You can actually reread a Bioplex plate multiple times uh, in case the power were to go out or something were to happen in the lab, so you, 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 you haven't lost your data, and, and the assay is quite stable over a 24-hour period. So, um, just as a, uh, as a quick uh, um, summary here, uh, BioRad supplies kits that are pre-made, uh, pre-plexed, or, or sold as single analytes, and our strength at BioRad are definitely with cytokines and phosphoproteins. So we have, we have, we have uh, uh, very large panels of human, mouse, and rat cytokine panels and phosphoprotein assays. We also have, have, um, have some um, disease-based assays for, for diabetes, angiogenesis, and, and some other ones. So it's worth coming to the BioRad website to check and see what we have. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of analytes, um, and again, that really is our strength. Uh, important to mention here that no, um, there are many commercial kits out there. BioLab is not the only supplier of Bioplex assays. Um, Luminex makes the beads. Uh, they are the primary manufacturing site for the actual raw beads, and large biotech companies purchase those beads from Luminex to make the assays that ultimately you buy. 
that are pre-conjugated uh, beads and, and with the detection antibodies, et cetera, in the kit. So, um, and because of that, IL-6 as an example from BioRad versus IL-6 from, from another biotech company could give you very different results in terms of sensitivity and dynamic range. It's really dependent on the antibodies that were used to couple to the beads and as the detection antibodies. So BioRad works very hard to, to find antibodies that give the best sensitivity, so the highest binding capacity on the capture antibody, so you get as much analyte out of your solution bound to the beads as possible, and best specificity for both the capture and the detection antibodies to assure that there's no crosstalk between uh, antibodies when you, when you multiplex. So, and that's why, again, our strength is cytokine and phosphoprotein assays along with, uh, along with some disease panels that we have. Um, there are other assays out there besides those, a those, those assays that I mentioned. So there are allergy testing, autoimmune cancer, cardiac, cell signaling. There's a whole bunch of assays. And all the, the manufacturers of Luminex assays need to report to Luminex periodically so that, and Luminex gathers all that information on their website. So luminexcore.com is another good place for you to go to learn more about what assays are available and to understand that this system is an open platform. So BioPlex is what BioRad calls the Luminex system. Uh, however, there are other uh, Luminex uh, instruments around. They all are from ultimately from Luminex, along with the kits from manufacturers who purchase the raw material from Luminex. So Luminex assays all work on the various uh, Luminex instruments that are out there, whether they be from BioRad or from other biotech companies. <coughs> and again, <coughs> same thing goes with kits. <coughs> so kits from BioRad will work on any Luminex system. So that's a quick, just a refresher of what this what the system is. It's really starting to take uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, be uh, become adopted by the by the life sciences industry. So I would definitely recommend trying it out, and feel free to contact any of your local uh, sales reps from BioRad, and we'll be happy to give you more information. Thank you.